Hello everybody, uh, this is Brother Luke, uh, Sin City Preacher. This uh, video I think I will title uh, Red Letter Christians versus Paul Onlyus. Now, I've made other videos in the past um, about the topic of Paul Onlyism. And I'm going to uh, address now the red letter only us, the people who believe that the red letters in the Bible, those are the, um, the words spoken directly from Jesus while he was incarnate, while he walked the earth. Uh, many Bibles print the Bible in black print, but the words spoken by Jesus are in red print. So they're called the red letters. And there's a group of people who think that these red letters are, are, are the only thing that, that matters. And then you've got the, uh, another sect of people that believe that uh, the red letters are basically to, reject, be, to be rejected, that uh, they're not really even to us. They're, uh, they're just to the Jews, and uh, the only one that uh, we should pay any attention to is, is the Apostle Paul. So there's all kinds of insanity going on, uh, people just going from one extreme to the other. And I've made numerous videos showing that the message of Jesus, the Apostle John, the Apostle Peter, the Apostle Paul, it's all the same message. And that is that uh, Jesus is God. He became a man so he could die for our sins. And he raised himself from the dead, proving the fact that he's God and that he has power of life, over life and death. And salvation comes by putting our faith in Jesus completely and in nothing else. And that no works are required. In fact, if you add works, you nullify the grace of God and you cannot receive the gift of salvation if you add any other requirements. And that is the, uh, the same message that you'll hear from Jesus, John, Peter, and Paul. Now, it really is uh, crazy, the, the extremes that people will go, but I, will, I want to first address uh, the words of Jesus. Uh, let's first look at uh, John uh, chapter 10, verse 30 and 31. It says, I and my Father are one. The Jews answered him, saying, For a good work we stone thee not, but for blasphemy, and because that thou, being a man, makest thyself God. So the Jews were going to kill Jesus because they understood that he was claiming to be God. So one thing we learn from the words of Jesus from his own mouth is that he is God Almighty. Uh, now let's look at John 6.38. Um, it says, For I came down from heaven, not to do mine own will, but the will of him that sent me. So Jesus said that he was God, and he said he came down from heaven to do a particular thing. And if you look at Mark 10, 45, he says what that is. He says, For even the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister and to give his life a ransom for many. What's a ransom? It's a payment to set someone free. Jesus said that he's God. He came down from heaven, and the reason he did was so that he could give his life as a ransom. And then he says in John 12, 32, and I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. This he said, signifying what death he should die. So here we see uh, in the gospel accounts, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, we are seeing that from Jesus' own mouth, he is teaching us these basic core doctrines as Christians that we must understand and agree to. And that is that Jesus is God that he became a man so he could die for our sins. And that's what Jesus said. So you find this uh, deity of Christ and this dying for our sins 
not just in Paul's writings. You find it in the uh, gospel accounts from the mouth of Jesus himself. And then is, Jesus says, it, it says in Matthew 16, 21, it says, from that time forth began Jesus to show unto his disciples how that he must go unto Jerusalem and suffer many things of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised again the third day. So here we see in the book of Matthew that so many people are saying, well, that's not to the church. The gospel's not in Matthew. Well, here we have in the book of Matthew, Jesus talking about dying, being killed, dying for our sins, and being raised the third day. So you can see that the, the principles and the doctrines of the deity of Christ, the death for our sins on the cross, and the resurrection are not limited to Paul's writings. This message is all through the New Testament. Now, uh, so what we, uh, what, it, what is important to learn from Jesus' words besides these doctrines is also how he dealt with people. And I hope that if you're watching this video now and you are interacting and dialoguing with uh, other believers and uh, other even false believers, in your dialogues with them, you will learn from what, how Jesus handled people. First of all, he was gentle with the sinners, the prostitutes and the tax collectors. But uh, uh, it's the self-righteous, the religious people that Jesus rebuked. Let's look at Matthew 23, 27. He says, Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For ye are like unto whited sepulchres, which indeed appear beautiful outward, but are within full of dead man's bones and of all uncleanness. So the people who uh, were always talking about following the laws and don't sin anymore and acting all self-righteous, all full of themselves with spiritual pride, these are the people that Jesus rebuked. So if that's the message that you're teaching, about repent of your sins and change your life and, and acting like you've already done all those things and everybody else must also conform to this religion, then you're one of these Pharisees that Jesus was rebuking. And uh, so he, released, he rebuked the self-righteous. And then if we look at Mark 10, 27, he rebuked uh, works for salvation. It says, and Jesus looking upon them saith, saith, with men it is impossible, but with God, for with God all, th but not with God, for with God all things are possible. This is the final thing he says to his apostles and disciples after Jesus dealt with the young rich ruler. The young rich ruler asked Jesus what he had good thing he had to do so that he could have uh, eternal life. And Jesus said, follow all the commandments. And the young rich man was full of spiritual pride and he boasted, yes, he's followed them all his whole life. And then Jesus put him to the test to show him that he really hadn't done everything that uh, to be perfect. He said, if you want to be perfect, go and sell everything you own and give it to the poor. And the rich man wasn't willing to do that, so he left dejected. And Jesus said, "With it's so hard for rich men to enter the kingdom of God. And his apostles said, well, if that's the case, then how can anybody be saved? Listen carefully. His apostles asked him, if, that is, if that's the case, if doing good things is, is uh, not going to get us into heaven, how is it possible for anyone to be saved? And Jesus said, with man it is impossible. Only with God is it possible. In other words, man cannot save himself through good works. It's impossible. Every time Jesus uh, commands people to do things that they're unable to do, he's challenging them 
in that way so that they can come to the conclusion that this is impossible. Just like the apostles uh, had to understand. With man, it is impossible. Give up trying to save yourself and instead rely on God. And this God that saves us is Jesus Christ. He is our Savior God. So we have Jesus uh, first uh, rebuking the self-righteous, rebuking the people who are trying to work for salvation and saying it's impossible. And um, then we also learn from Jesus how to deal with people. Uh, every time Jesus had an encounter with someone in the scriptures, uh, you will not find a long series of back and forth uh, arguing going on. You have Jesus simply uh, make the point and the people either believe or move on as the rich young ruler did. Uh, and then Jesus moves on to more people, spreading more seeds. He's not getting into lengthy debates. And if that's what you're doing here on YouTube or in your ministries in life as you witness to people, if you're spending all your time going back and forth, doing lengthy debates with people, that's not the example we see in the life of Jesus. He tells them the truth, and they either believe or they don't, and then he finds someone else and tells them the truth. He says in Matthew 10, 14, And whosoever shall not receive you, nor your words, when you depart out of that house or city, shake off the dust of your feet. Uh, he tells us, just move on. Once you discern that you are casting your pearls to the swine, the people who do not have ears to hear, that simply want to argue, then use wisdom and discernment and say, it's time to dust off my feet and move, move on. Now, so that's the message you find in the red letters, that Jesus claimed to be God. He said he would die for our sins. He said he would be raised from the dead. He said um, faith in him was what was needed. When they asked Jesus, what works does God require? He said, this is the work of God. Believe on the one he sent. Believing in Jesus is the only requirement that Jesus gave them. So that's the message uh, that we need to understand. Jesus is God. He died for our sins. He's raised from the dead. He's, he's, faith in him is the only requirement. And then now let's compare this for a moment to, to what Peter, John, and Paul said here. In 2 Peter 1.1, 1, 1, Simon Peter, a servant and apostle of Jesus Christ, to those who through the righteousness of our God and Savior, Jesus Christ, have received a faith as precious as ours. We have Simon Peter proclaiming Jesus is our God and Savior. We have in 1 John 5.20, almost the same words by the Apostle John, we know also that the Son of God has come and has given us understanding so that we may know him who is true and we are in him who is true, even in his Son, Jesus Christ. He is the true God and eternal life. So we have Peter and John proclaiming Jesus is God and Savior. Now we look at Titus 2.13. The Apostle Paul writes, While we wait for the blessed hope, the glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. So we have Jesus, Peter, John, and Paul all proclaiming Jesus is God and Savior. They're all in agreement. And they all preached the deed of Christ, the cross, the resurrection, and faith alone is the only requirement for salvation. Faith in the Savior, and he saves you. Now, there is an exception that I've found in the scriptures in the New Testament where someone is teaching a different message than Jesus, John, Paul, and Peter. And this is in the book of James. I challenge anyone now to find in the book of James this same message. You will not find uh, James teaching about the deity of Christ. You will not find him teaching about the cross. 
You will not find James teaching about the resurrection. You will not find James teaching about faith alone, in Christ alone. In fact, he says, faith is not enough. Faith without works is dead. He said, uh, works, uh, faith is not enough. Whereas Paul says, faith is the only thing that's required. James says, faith is not enough. So, uh, I want to just caution everybody and urge everybody. Uh, do not, uh, if you're a, if you're a Paul onlyist, reconsider. The message that Paul has is not exclusive to Paul. You find it in the words of Jesus, in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. You find it in Paul's writings, in Peter's writings, in John's writings. They're all in agreement. The only dissenter is James. So don't be a Paul onlyist. Now. There are other people that go to the other extreme and they reject the Apostle Paul because they think that the words of Jesus are the only thing that matters. In fact, they don't even understand the words of Jesus because he clearly says that uh, the work of God is this, to believe in the one he sent. He said, this is the work that you must do. The only thing that's required is to believe in the one God sent and that is Jesus Christ, our Savior. Okay. The reason that he challenges people to do these other things, like go and sell everything you own, go and be perfect because your Father is in heaven is perfect, go and sin no more, cut off your right hand if it causes you to sin. The reason Jesus does those things is to make people understand it's impossible to satisfy God through your personal merit. Go and do all these things and you're going to find out that it's impossible. You have to throw up your hands in defeat and accept that you need to be saved. And that's who Jesus is. He's our Savior. So don't make the mistake of being a red-letter only Christian and don't make the mistake of being a Paul only uh, They're all in agreement with the exception of James. So I hope this is helpful to you. Uh, bless you all. Bless you all in the name of our great Savior God, his name is Jesus Christ.